All right, good evening, uh, um, Clueless A Trading members. So we'll probably have a few more people streaming in. It is, after all, a Sunday evening, and everyone's tired and uh, probably just, you know, uh, chilling out. But uh, thank you for joining, Corey. Um, this is Frank, Clueless A Trading. Uh, this is a free market update uh, webinar for Sunday, eight, uh, October, I'm losing track of time here, October 30th, uh, one day before the end of this uh, uh, very volatile and, uh, and, and crazy, to say the least, um, month of October, um, uh, ending tomorrow. Full disclosure, this is purely for financial education and not for any solicitation or advice. So let me just kick off by saying a couple of things which are true to my heart. And uh, like my good friend Corey always says, you know, uh, I, 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 uh, this is unscripted and this is what I'm looking at. Let's just put it this way. We are dealing with one of the most volatile markets that I have traded or dealt with in a very long time. Uh, we always deal with volatility. We always deal with uncertainty. Uh, and but uh, recently, uh, because of both economic and political factors, uh, extraneous factors that are coming our way, um, we are dealing with uh, very random type of volatility. And in between that, oh, we're scoring some nice wins. Uh, we are obviously having a difficult time in in managing some of our trades for no fault of ours, and that applies to all of us. And uh, of course, um, active traders who are tracking uh, the tactical charts that I very diligently put all throughout the day are making some decent money on certain trades, which can last anywhere from 15 minutes to 30 minutes to an hour, in some cases shorter than that. Uh, but that is obviously uh, meant for people who have full access uh, to the charts, the screens, and um, and, 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 and can react to things as quickly as I'm putting things out there. Let me just be uh, uh, straightforward. There's an old uh, um, uh, saying, and this, was a, this is a Machiavellian uh, uh, saying. It says, he who travels fast travels alone. Now, some people might misconstrue that. Maybe it's a politically incorrect statement. But the fact remains, because it comes from Machiavelli, uh, uh, that the fact remains that it is true that when you're managing your own trades, um, and this is, uh, uh, we are responsible for each of our uh, individual trades. Uh, the fact is, the faster we can move, the better we can do. Now, that doesn't mean that we are, that my goal in my in my service at Clueless A Trading is to do five minute trades. But if somebody is going to play the volatility on an intraday basis, then they should be prepared to travel and move very quickly. And that is a fact. Um, w what forecasting in this type of environment, to be very honest with you, is almost a futile game. However, I still try to do that and still try to put in my two cents based on my experiences having dealt with very, very terrible markets going all the way back from 1996 onwards. That was the onset of my career on Wall Street and in the financial world. Um, well, financial world was prior to that at Putnam Investments up in Boston, but there I was more on the analytical end uh, as a junior analyst. Um, the fact remains that um, this is definitely the speed and the ferocity of how things are moving, as you can clearly see in between all these pattern, what I call structured volatility. It looks random, but it is structured within certain ranges, as I keep on showing is very difficult to manage. There is no question about it. What I will try to achieve tonight within this hour, an hour and change, is try to uh, put in my two cents as to what I see uh, the, the ranges can be, what I think the bottoms could be, short-term bottoms, mind you, and also put in a few um, uh, uh, strategies that I use on playing um, the earnings part uh, what we call ER plays, and uh, given the fact that we are right smack middle of earnings season, and a lot of big boys and and mid-level boys and small boys on the, when I say boys, I mean stocks, um, are going to be presenting their earnings, and that volatility, and, and those earnings um, swings, pre-market and after hours, post-market, can be somewhat lucrative. Now, that is only for people who have time to do it, but 
as I've always done, I like to share what I'm doing um, and what my feelings, you know, what my thoughts are about that. So I'll try to put all that together. And the last couple of minutes of the session, I'll leave it open for questions, um, and uh, and 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 uh, and we'll we'll basically go from there. This session is going to be fully uploaded on the Clueless Aid Trading YouTube channel, so anyone can view it. Hopefully before tomorrow, uh, before the start of this week, and um, and we'll go from there. One of the most important things I'd like to say that despite all the political shenanigans that's going out there, we all remain patriots, we remain Americans, and I truly believe in the, from the bottom of my heart that whatever happens will be for the good of our nation. And that's the bottom line fact. Because the way I look at it, in my, in my years that I've been um, alive, um, I do believe that things do work themselves out because the, uh, because the nation itself, as on its own, does correct itself in between all our deficiencies and the faults that we have. And that's just a personal thought that I just wanted to share. So saying all that, um, let's get into it here. What we're seeing here right now, as we get into uh, the, the uh, this is early evening Sunday, um, the Globex futures on the global markets have started trading. Uh, China and those uh, large uh, markets haven't started trading yet. Uh, however, um, what we are seeing, uh, 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 what I see is, uh, let's get into it. So, first of all, um, there is no simple one plus one equals two, especially now in this phase of the market that we're going through. We have elections coming up in 10 days time um, or so, and, um, and I'm just going to put through what I can see. So let's go back to the bigger picture, which is the daily. And I'm going to start off with by looking at the daily chart of uh, the e-minis. In fact, let me just, uh, which is a, a more real-time picture of what's going on and, uh, and go from there. Let me just zoom in to what is important. I'd like to remind everyone, this was back in, in June when we thought the world was going to end, which I thought the world was going to end for a bit, to be honest with you, when Brexit happened. And then we had a, one of the most ferocious runs in the market, which we managed to capture a good portion of it. Um, uh, and, and that was absolutely tremendous. Nobody expected the market to bounce from the 1980 level or so. I expected the market to go down to about 1950. 1960, if not a little bit lower, but hey, it doesn't matter what I think, it's what the markets want to do. We are all pawns in this game. We just have to try to figure out how to make money in between what happens. So this was Brexit right back there, as you can see. I'd like to remind everyone on that because it's always good to have a perspective of where we're coming from. And I drew an uptrend line right now in real time, which I've done before, but I'm doing it again on from the Brexit lows right here, touching a very pivotal point, which was touched on 13th of October, 13th of October, uh, where we reached a low of uh, the E-minis did at, uh, I believe it was pre-market when we touched that uh, on, on the 13th of a low of 2107. You can see that right here on the, on the, on the right-hand side. And um, that is where this red line comes in. And I expected the market to come and touch the lower end of this uh, lower arm of the Darvis box and also the lower arm of uh, where we had bounced from on, on uh, um, what do you call it, um, uh, the 12th of, of, uh, of, uh, of September. But we never really got there. And that was around the 2100 level. What we did was we bounced off the 2106 level or so. So now, um, so this is, this is an uptrend line that I'm looking at as a reference point. Let me get this line out. So we are a little bit more clear on where we are. Because too many lines drawn on, on top of a uh, market chart can confuse people. So let me get this out. These are the most important lines we're looking at, what I call the asymmetrical triangle, which a lot of the fantastic older technicians have also shown. And I respect their work too, obviously. And um, so this is where we are. We were tracking in between the symmetrical triangle, and then we, we broke down below that, tried to climb into it, failed, and now we are here. 
So, so where do we see what things are going? This is a daily chart. So for active traders, this really doesn't mean much. For swing traders, it does mean something. Because for active traders who are looking on a shorter, or even non-active traders who are looking at shorter term time frames, who are more concerned about what happens on a daily or weekly basis, the daily charts really don't give you that, that comfort, as I should say, or mental comfort that we're looking for. The mental comfort that we're looking for, which we sometimes like to be in denial of, is what happens on a daily basis. In the old days when I used to manage institutional money and high retail net worth money, I used to always tell my clients, everyone thinks long term and then freaks out short term. And that is exactly the case with traders. Traders like to think on a long term basis or on a swing basis, but every time the market dips a bit or does all kinds of volatility moves, they either leave their trades, get nervous and do stupid things. And believe me, that happens to everyone. It even happens to me sometimes. The more the money you have in uh, uh, playing exposed to the market, the more nervous is your frontal lobe of your brain. That's a fact. All right. Let's not deny that. And we do stupid things sometimes. Also, how many times have we seen charts in many, most cases, most of my charts, 80 percent of the time do arrive at that destination where I'm saying it's going to go. But in between, there is so much structured volatility that that a good uh, that a good amount of traders are not even in the trade, but it gets there. And I can name example after example after example of that happening. So saying all that, one must, one way or the other, and I cannot give you that answer, manage their own trades to a degree that they have to bite into the risk factor, maybe sometimes walk away from the screen, not look at it, and, uh, and, and do what they need to do to preserve their trade maybe push out if they're playing options to push out those options on a following week or the week after or so uh, and uh, and and somehow be in that position because when it gets to that destination that I project on my charts and they're not there and this happens to a lot of you believe me okay and it's happened to me sometimes too lesser than others but it has happens to me too it is a terrible feeling to know that you could have made that much and you were not in that position which you held and no one can say that what I'm saying is incorrect. It is the truth. Saying all that, this is where we are right now. Candle reading and looking at patterns is a critical component of chart reading. It does not always give you the uh, correct answer, but it certainly gives you a level of comfort because at least you know what the markets are doing or about to do. How and when exactly they do it, that is the problem. None of us know that. And, and the machines which control the market, they don't even know that. One of the biggest fallacies about the stock market and financial trading is they think we, uh, we think that the algos and the high free, uh, which are the algorithmic high frequency trading black box programs know exactly the, what they're doing. They do not. The truth is they exaggerate the moves that is happening in front of them. So for example, when the markets are about to sell off a bit, they will exaggerate that move and sell the markets off more. When the markets are going higher on a candle, for example, they will exaggerate the move and make it go higher than what it should be. And that is the nature of the beast. They are in a position to leverage and move forward wherever, whichever direction the markets are going. So we get hostage to that. But the biggest mistake that retail traders make as human beings, and I do too at times, Okay, and I try to discipline myself to not do it, is to chase. I say many times in the, in the trading room, do not be a lemming, do not be a chaser. I do not mean to insult anyone. It is a fact. We are all lemmings and chasers. We're always thinking that when prices go higher, they will go higher. But that is not the fact. What we have to do is keep a very, very close eye, a hawk eye like a Marine, like our proud armed forces do when they're fighting the bad guys out there. Keep a very close eye through their, through their uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, sniper rifles to see where the bad guys are moving. And that is exactly what trading is. I cannot even emphasize to, you know, more than what I'm doing, how important that is. All right? So we have to look at charts. And it doesn't matter if you're using a laptop or using an iPhone. 
there are many ways to keep an eye on it. You know, on an iPhone, one of the best platforms that you can use is investing.com. I post a lot of charts off my iPhone when I'm off Command Central, which is my trading desk with all my multiple screens to use that because you can see the candle, defla uh, candle movements up and down and you can see what's happening. Um, so it's very important to do that. Please, I implore to everyone, you have to go, you have to look at your own screens as quickly as possible, match them with my charts and try to see what's going on and either stay in the trade, bail or whatever you need to do. Remember, it's manage your own trades, M-Y-O-T. Final thing I'll say before we get into the charts is look, um, I'm just a person who has an extensive repertoire of experience. Maybe I'm a little bit smarter about the markets than most people out there. I, I am a thinker about the markets. I am a thinker about what's happening about the political and the economic, macroeconomic situation that's going on. That's my passion. Some people love to follow every single baseball stats and the football you know, players and what they're doing and this and that. Well, I like to do the same thing with markets. That's me, and I've never been shy about that. So my passion is what comes out in my service, but use me as a tool, as a resource tool to enhance what you are doing. I am not a crystal ball. Any service that says all that stuff, good for them. God bless them. They're all lying. All right? They're all liars. They're all crooked. Because the fact is that nobody can determine the market on an exact basis every minute of the day, every day of the week. They can put in their viable forecast based on the probabilities of what might happen. But they cannot tell you exactly what the market's doing. I have been right more often than not. That's the reason why you guys are listening to me. However, use me as a tool, as a resource, as a valuable resource. Follow other people in what they do. They're very smart. They have a lot of different ways of looking at it. There is no one way to skin the cat, as they say in the business. There are many ways to do it. You put all of it together, it's going to start making sense. I just look at the markets in a different way. I have my own opinions. We go from there. Saying all that, let's dive into the technicals of what I see here. So first of all, this is a daily chart of the E-minis, right? So, uh, which is the, the futures uh, with the core, uh, which is the first derivative of the S&P 500, right? The E-minis. Now, looking at this here, forget the volume part, we see accelerating volume, four days of accelerating volumes on that, um, which was, this was the Friday volume, as you can see here, very high, uh, at about 2.4 million uh, contracts traded uh, just on Friday alone on the E-minis. You can see that acceleration. And to me, as a contrarian, I looked at as a good sign. Some people say, why? It's accelerating volume. Well, the reason I look at it as a good sign, that means there is capitulation happening. The more you sell, cheaper things get. Good companies get pretty cheap. And that's, I'd like to see that. Generally speaking, you get roughly four to five days of accelerating uh, acceler acceleration on the volume bars, not the volume candles, the volume bars, and then you get a reflex bounce. So tomorrow could be a down day. All right, we don't know that, but that's the case. You don't generally see, and you can see that clearly uh, all the way since Brexit, that we, have had, we haven't had four days of accelerating volume bars. You haven't. This was Brexit, looked like Armageddon, okay? For, and uh, of course, the volume was tremendously high on the E-mini for different reasons. When Brexit happened that evening, um, it was a very thin market. And whatever the case, there was a complete, all stops got triggered in the Globex futures. And uh, from here to Japan, to Dubai, to name it, you know, to Hong Kong. So you had 4.16 million, you can see that number here, um, of uh, 4 million plus of contracts that were dumped because there were no, the counterparty wasn't there. What is a counterparty? It's the other side that's going to absorb your selling, right? That's what makes a market. Somebody sells, somebody buys. Holds, holds the position, sells it to somebody else. That's what makes a market. So that was very high. Then you got the next day, which was a Monday. This was a Friday because Brexit happened on Thursday night. And then uh, this was Monday. Uh, I did say Monday we we're going to open lower. Uh, I'm sorry, this was Friday. Uh, was it Friday? 627? Let me see. 628? No, this was Monday. And, uh, and then we actually turned on Monday and Tuesday. Forget about it. So if, we, if people didn't buy, you know, we actually bought around here on the reversal candle. 
Uh, it's all posted out there on the YouTube channel. Feel free to dig up that video cast and look at it with the visuals. And then, of course, it was just a massive, massive monster move. Like I always like to say, after a massive waterfall drop like that, which uh, especially uh, in the market drops, I believe, around 950 points on the Dow in two days. Anytime you see close to a thousand point drop, you buy with hands down. My opinion, based on my experiences, people will say, why? I know, why can't a thousand point drop become a 2000 point drop? Well, it just hasn't happened, period. It didn't even happen in 2009, okay? You get a reflex bounce, and after that, the market might fall again, except in this case, it didn't. So that's what I'm saying. If you see anywhere between a 900 to a thousand point drop in the market, and the flash crash was May 10th of 2010, I left Wall Street on September of 2010. Flash crash was a eye-opening experience. The market dropped about a thousand points. We didn't know what prices were where. I was putting in orders blind into the market and made a pretty substantial amount of money just within the same day when prices opened because the market bounced back and ended. I believe that day it ended down only 500 points. In other words, it fell 1,000 and then bounced up a 500. Hey, it happens, right? So looking back at, at uh, look understanding um, uh, 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 what do you call uh, um, day counts, if you want to call it that way, um, this was two days and then it bounced. So looking back at this thing here, which you, uh, which, uh, you can see uh, uh, and, and you haven't had, we haven't had uh, four days of accelerating. We have three days here. Um, that was in uh, uh, August. Okay. We had three days of acceleration in, in selling. We had three days here again in sep early September. We had three days here on the first week in September. We had three days here in um, the um, 11th, 12th, and 13th of October. And now we have four days. So given the acceleration move, let's project that it's going to be one more day. You do not get, generally speaking, and of course anything can happen, but I'm just saying, you do not get, generally speaking, more than five, maximum six days of continuous selling. You do get a reflex bounce. As tactical traders, we are looking at reflex bounces to make money or short the market depending on where it's going. If you look at this at first glance, from Brexit all the way here, if you count it, you will find probably equal or more the number of green buy bars, volume bars, than sell bars, okay? But that doesn't matter. I'm talking about the sequence on a continuous basis of a uninterrupted selling flow. Futures right now are down three, 20, uh, uh, three points, 3.25. Um, but that doesn't really tell us anything what will happen tomorrow. Believe me when I tell you that. In the old days, we could predict what might happen tomorrow by looking at futures on the night before, but that is not the case anymore. So let's look at the internals first before we go into the charts. This is a daily chart of the E-minis, right? Which is the back, the first derivative of the S&P 500. We are not yet completely oversold. We're not. You can see that by the shape of the stochastics it is getting down there but it is possible it gets below the uh, the 20 line that uh, the 20 rsi and then decide to move higher okay so we have some further selling in my opinion in the works and this is exactly what is going to happen now what if it just turns from here what between now and 8 and 9 o'clock, 9.30 tomorrow morning, we get futures down 10. Pre-market. In that case, we will already have achieved what I'm showing here on a projected basis. These levels are maximum buy zones. These are the points of maximum aggression. What do I mean by that? That means for people who are serious uh, traders, okay? Small or big, doesn't matter how much money you're dealing with. These are the points of maximum uh, 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 placement on the long side. You can see that here. You can see that here. You can see that here during Brexit. 
these are the points of maximum fear, the maximum frustration, point of maximum despair. No question about it. I know it. I feel it. And that's the hardest time to put your cash that you have on the side into the market because you just cannot imagine that things are falling that hard. And that is when you make the biggest money over the next couple of hours, if not the next 24 hours. So are we getting there? We probably will. It might happen by as early as 11 a.m. Monday morning. We want, this is what we really want, honestly speaking. We want a thump down on Monday morning where we get the stochastics down here just the way I've projected. Create maximum fear and then have the markets bounce from there. Saying all that, let's take a look at what we can expect on the actual prices on the e-minis, which everyone should follow if they do want to know what's actually happening within the guts of the market, which helps their trades. So let me just zoom in here and see where we are. So saying all that, let's take a look. This is your uptrend line from Brexit, right? We broke that. Fine. What we're seeing here is a classic, is a classic And this I can see with my naked eye, a, a pattern of, uh, of robotic selling. These are systematic, orderly trading. Somebody in, in, in our group, um, always learning, um, uh, asked a terrific question. goes, what is orderly selling? Orderly selling means there is panic, but it is being systematically driven and not just crazy panic. Crazy panic is dangerous because it is pure chaos and you cannot chart it. So this is more systematic. So saying all that, let me draw a downtrend channel. The up lower end of the downtrend channel coincides here with the lower end of this, of this consolidation channel, or let's call it a downtrend channel. It's no longer a consolidation channel. It's a downtrend channel right here which matches this point where we had a massive hammer reversal. People like us who bought on the 10th at these levels, and I did identify that, not necessarily on Thinkorswim, on the Quad Algo HFT platform, people who reacted on it within one day made at least 110% on their S&P calls by the morning that the market opened up. It's a fact. All right, so saying all that, you can see that this is the exact level where we were. So do we dip down and test that? I would like the market to do that. This level also happens to be a very critical, very critical support level. Going all the way back to, please look at the date, going back to the 15th of September. Remember, the middle of the month is always the highest volatility. Okay, 15th of September. This also happened to be a support level, which close to the support levels of the following previous days. Of course, there is one other level to contend with, which is down here at 2100. You can see that, the magenta line. Is it possible that we drop from 2119.68, 60, or let's call it 2120, where we are trading at right now, as I speak on Sunday evening, down to 2100 absolutely possible that's roughly 20 s p points do the math roughly about 100 to 120 dow points and then we test the lowest end within the past month and a half or month or so month and a half all right which is right here as shown by Mr. Darvis, not drawn by me, that's automatically placed on it, and everyone should use the Darvis box on their platforms that they're using. 2100 would be a severe buy point. So another 100 to 120 points down, which is not going to feel good on the long side, would be, in my opinion, a very powerful floor where you would have a triple bottom. I mean, this is a double bottom 
but a quadruple bottom based on these dots that you can see here or a quintuple bottom if you want to look at it and then we get a sharp bounce now does that sharp bounce mean we're just going to zoom on and get to the upper end of the darvis and make a new high on the s p 500 absolutely not as a tactical trader biggest money is made in between the ranges that we're trading in we're not dreaming i'm not dreaming and hoping oh we're going to go back to the old hide and stuff that's all garbage we could very well break this line for all i know but i'm giving you the probability of what i think is going to be the biggest mover depend uh, showing uh, based on what i just showed you on the internals we have a oh one of the internal that i forgot to show you is our good old mcclellan oscillator the real selling pressure the real underneath seismic that's the seismic uh, geiger counter right on the earthquake the seismic Geiger counter, known as the McCallum Oscillator, is at minus 132 on the daily. For God's sakes, you don't need to even know the number. Look at every single time the McClellan Oscillator got down to these levels. We had vicious bounces. McClellan Oscillator goes to 200. It's literally hands down, close your eyes, put blinders on, buy time. Because over the next six hours over the next 24 hours you will make the most amount of money that you ever seen ever however no very few to none do it some do it some do it and that's what i call shooting fish in the barrel because you just buy it there in the in down there with the mclaren oscillator down 150 200 and within the next day you're just selling at will because you the price is just shooting higher. The majority of the lemmings and the chases are chasing. And a good amount of people are sitting there, what I call in a house of pain and regret. I'm not saying that to mock people. I'm telling you the truth. And once you face the truth, it shall set you free. And it is a fact. Now, you don't have to do it with large amounts of money. You can buy one contract of the S&P call at $6, and you will see it go to 13 14 15 It's nonstop. But in order to do that, you have to suffer the sacrifice of that pain the day before or the, maybe the day prior to that. Because in order to get the rewards in life, you have to persevere and sacrifice. I am no evangelist. I'm telling you the truth of how markets work. So what I'm getting at is we are at minus 132. We could slip lower. No question about it. Okay? If we get to what's the minus 200 level in the McClellan oscillator, and I've shown this a lot of times, a significant amount of times, you got to buy with hands down whatever you can afford or whatever you can do. But that is the ma a point of maximum opportunity. Maximum opportunity isn't when everyone's all happy and giddy. That's when the that's called shooting fish in a barrel. You sell those higher prices, your profits, to some other sucker who is chasing prices. Chasing prices on its own is a fool's game. Believe me, I know it. All right? Prices going higher is nothing in a machine-driven market. It simply means we're getting overbought and the and the institutions and the black boxes that control the market are going to sell the crap out while you sit there and try to buy it because you're excited that the market's going higher. How many times has this truth been thrown out? And I've constantly kept on telling people, please, please, please don't do it. And they still do it. Some still do it. It's a shame. Don't do it. You cannot just rely on prices and to make a determination whether or not it's worth buying those higher prices. I would rather be a buyer of bargain basement technical, tactical lows than a chaser of happiness. Please try to understand that. I've shown it so many times. Saying all that, here's your downtrend channel. This is the level that I think the market comes down to, which is around 2107. Translates into about 2113 or so on the S&P 500. Remember, you add five or six points to the E-minis in order to arrive at the actual value of the SPX. And then, of course, you got the 2100 level on the E-minis, which is roughly about 2107 on the SPX. These are nothing to fear. These are points of maximum opportunity. 
because at least for a day or so, you get a severe bounce. What happens after that? We deal with it. Because longer term forecasts at this point are meaningless. People tell us we're going into a deep, dark bear market. Well, I've been hearing that garbage since 2009. I've heard that garbage since 1996. I saw the tech crash of 2000, uh, 2000. I was one of the early sellers of techs in 2000 at some beautiful prices because I was mostly a tech oriented uh, 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 research guy who was buying that for my clients. I had names that uh, one of my first stocks that I made a significant amount of money for uh, for, for my clients uh, was a, com a company called VLSI Technology. Nobody even knew what the hell VLSI was it's called very large system integration. Now it's a common word in Silicon Valley. OK, so I'm just saying, like, do not just look at prices and get excited get into looking at the underbelly of what's going on. So the underbelly of what's going on, uh, if you want to look at it that way, uh, from a pattern perspective, uh, let me try to show this. A bull will say this, and I know I've shown it on my charts, that look, this, tracking the prices, looks like a, looks like a triple bottom dragon bullish formation. That's what a bull will tell you. I don't know whether the bulls are right or the bears are right. When everybody thinks the market's crappy, the market's going to slap the crap out of you and go up on the upside. It's happened to me when I did that ultimate wrong thing two weeks ago. I went short the market because I, was, I got emotional on it while the technicals were showing it was going the other way. It wasn't a nice feeling. Yes, made up a decent amount of money on individual stock trades that went up the right direction. But on the SPX, oh, it wasn't pretty. So the point is, a bull will tell you this is a uh, dragon bullish formation. A bear will tell you, let me get this out. A bear will tell you that this is what's going to happen because the world is just falling apart. The world never falls apart because by the time the world really falls apart, you're not going to be a trader. Tell you that for a fact, okay? That, oh, this is it. It's going to go completely down. It's going to follow the channel all the way down to 260. That's the bearish view. Can it happen? Sure it can. Will it happen in a straight line down? Absolutely not. That's the only thing I can guarantee. Nothing happens in a straight line down fashion. Straight down. Has it happened before? Very few times in the market. Even in 2008, 2009, during the great market crash. So levels that I'm watching, these are the levels that I'm watching period. Okay, we're getting deep oversold. We're not there yet completely, but we're close to it. Looking at the shorter term picture of what might happen, we look at the one hour. The one hour, again, and I've drawn this chart several times, um, you are looking at, let's get this line out. This is the Brexit line. And just take a look at this. Okay. Again, you're looking at a low of 2107. We are at 2118 right now. You can see that right here. 2118, 2119, 2107 is the lower end of this trading band. So with the trading band that we have been trading in, this being the downtrend line, is this. Because all the market is doing is, is just moving in between uh, um, a very large, not tight, very large trading band. So this one would be... There you go. Okay, so you got 2150 on the upside, and you got 2108 on the downside. So we could fall 10 points from here to there, get real deeply oversold as I showed on the daily chart. 10 points from here to there is roughly 60 points. Is it possible that we open down 60 points tomorrow morning? Absolutely. By that time, we'll be down here. But I believe that this trading band that we are trading in should hold. Okay, this is this is all we're doing. Okay, we're down here, move up, and somewhere along the line, it's going to zigzag its way, convolute its way, all the way up to 2150. I know it's going to happen this week. It will go to 2150. Again, I do have the reserve the right to be wrong based on what the markets are doing. The forecasting is not a guaranteed business. I'm just giving you my opinion. So given everything that's happened, this is the this is this is this is the trading band that the market is traveling in. 
I know it might feel like Armageddon in the middle of the day when your real money is at play and all that stuff is going on, but keeping emotions aside, this is the trading band that we are trading in. Down here, around 2107, 2150. So that is roughly 43 points. 43 times roughly six, you're talking about a 258 Dow point that we are traveling in. 258 Dow points might not mean much to a lot of people, but for traders like all of us, that's a lot of points because individual stocks get swayed around like nobody's business, and we know that, right? So the 250, point, 250 points from here to there, that's what it translates into. Let's move on. Now, looking at if, let me connect this with, with active traders, you know, if they're looking at certain things. Corey had, had asked a couple of times like time frames that we look at. Well, the best way, let's put it this way. You can start looking at the five minute, which will give you the first indication whether some real volume is coming into the market. Okay, so let's look at Friday, for example. So this is Friday. So on Friday, we were cruising along till the email, FBI email uh, uh, um, investigation, reopening investigation, the Clinton um, email um, thing came out, and then that was around one o'clock. It just happened to be that I issued a, a market alert at 104 before that came out, just by looking at my internals, because it had gotten severely overbought, okay, around 12.50, I issued a signal to buy uh, the 2135, same day expiry S&P 500 puts. They were roughly around two, $2.50, somewhere around there. They went to sixteen dollars within a within between one o'clock and two o'clock. That's two to sixteen. Even if you bought it one for two hundred dollars, it went to sixteen hundred dollars. That's probably the biggest money anyone's made in the shortest period of time in their lifetime as a trader. Within an hour. Yes, it's happened here and there, but not it doesn't happen that often. Now was I a genius to put that out there? And SPX 2135, October 28th, it was October 28th on Friday, right? Yeah, um, put, expiring, no, it was a hedge. Put it out there. Little did I know this was gonna come out and bang, it went. Now the way I, the reason I did it is because I, my multiple charts, not just think or swim, but specifically the ones on the Quad Algo HFT platform. And as you know, I put multiple charts out there for people to use their brains, focus on it, understand it, match with their own charts and do what they, whatever they need to do. Or simply look at my chart and say, okay, he's putting an arrow out there saying it's overbought, this and that, maybe I should go ahead and do it. And some, and some did it. And boy, did I get enough uh, 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 individual messages via email as well as on PM thanking me for that alert. Well, God bless them that they took the trade. You don't have to go crazy. You can buy a couple. You can buy 400 bucks. That'd be $3,200. Right? So the point is that, um, so the point is that uh, you got, um, sorry, not $3,200. What am I saying? You know, 400 shares, uh, this uh, would be, um, the calls were two, so if you bought two calls uh, at uh, at uh, 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 you know at, at four hundred dollars, yeah, it'll be thirty two hundred dollars. I mean, that's that's crazy, but it happens. That's the market for you. I mean, just showing you real life examples. So, bottom line is that uh, if you are actively looking at the e minis one of the key things you have to focus on, because that's one of the only charts where you really have to focus on hard on volume, because these every single one of these candles is telling you what a lot of the institutional players are doing uh, on the backside. So you got this big fat down, then you got a minus uh, a short covering, and you can see how the volume rose tremendously uh, since the FBI um, investigation news uh, broke right right from there and then you and these two very large green candles were at 355 you can see the time right below here right and uh, and then at four o'clock so it's very important for e-mini 
and I, I'm not just talking about active traders. Anyone, everyone should practice understanding charts on this side so they can effectively manage their trades on the front side is you have to look at the volume because they're telling you a story. They're telling you where they're coming in. And of course, there are traders who are much better, faster than me in looking at things. They watch level two of where the orders are put and this and that. I personally am too lazy to do that, okay? I just like the visual part of it, and I can tell by looking at the thing. I, my eyes are very well trained to look at volume spikes to understand, like, you know, whether they're coming in or not coming in. But it's very effective to look, you know, uh, to use level two orders waiting somewhere to be sold or bought, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, saying all that, these were the last two spikes at the end of the day. Does it really mean a lot? Not really, but is it worth noting? Absolutely, because at four o'clock, and at 355, we had this humongous, there was 101,000 contracts covered or bought. And then the, at four o'clock, there was uh, 74,000. You can see that number down here, 74,000 contracts that were bought at the close. So if the so-called smart money knew that we were gonna completely collapse and burn on Monday, and I still think the Monday opening is a lower open, okay? Then why would they cover at the end of the day? Day traders don't have that power, that kind of power to 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 cover uh, their shorts and buy 99,000 contracts. Come on, these are real institutional heavy duty players. Whichever the case, stochastics mix it up, you know, it goes from there. So anyway, um, that was a fluke trade, but it worked out fantastic and good for everyone who did it. So at this point, if we look at the five minute chart, you can see five minute charts are great because you can start to see the initial movements when it starts. Immediately when you see a reversal candle like you're seeing here, and I'm teaching you the intricacy, the, the in, sort of the pro stuff that, you know, what I do and I'm sure a lot of other, you know, sharp traders do. You see a reversal candle, you can see that here. That's a reversal candle. You see another candle develop you immediately look at the 15 minute, because remember the five minutes full of a lot of noise, right? A lot of noise, because it's moving real fast. Uh, so you quickly switch to the 15 minute and you look at the same thing. You look at the same thing and you say, okay, here was a reversal candle. Well, this was actually early, very uh, pre-market, but here was a reversal candle. Um, and I'm sorry, what was the reversal candle? What time period was it? One second. Five minute. And let me just point out one thing before I go any further. Technical stuff on pays a lot of bills, believe me when I tell you. But in order to really get used to it, you gotta put in, you gotta train your eyes to really look at it. After that, it's kind of fun, all right? But initially, it's very dry, very dry. It's dry stuff. But if dry stuff can turn into real greenbacks and cash in your pocket, on a P&L basis, that's when you start getting excited, right? That's just the way it is. So that's why uh, I find that a lot of traders don't want to put in initial hard work of doing it, and uh, they could just they just think that they can't do it. They're just too lazy, you know. They don't want to understand the candle movements. It's really not that hard, believe me. You know, my parents were doctors. My dad was a surgeon, and uh, and my mother was a pediatrician. Okay. He did more complicated stuff than I'll ever do in my life, okay? He saved lives. He delivered babies. So the point is that what we do uh, as traders is really not rocket science. We just have to be a little bit more diligent. And uh, what we do have an edge over any other profession out there that we really have to be brave. We have to have guts. And, um, and that's important, all right? You don't go into a surgeon and say, hey, do you have any excuse my French, balls and guts to go ahead and operate on that patient and save their life. They're not going to say, well, I don't need the guts. And they need expertise and skill. So we need expertise, skill, and we need guts. All right? We need grit, like I, like I mentioned one day. We need grit. So that's the difference between us and what other professions are out there. So saying all that, uh, talking about reversal candles and stuff. So here was a reversal candle. Oh, this is the one, right? 405. So here's a reversal candle here on the five minute. So you see that happening. You want to validate if that's a real one or a fake one. You move quickly into the uh, in uh, at 
uh, this was the one right there uh, into the 15 minute. As the reversal candle is developing, this is validating the point that this is a real hammer reversal, not a fake one, because the 15 minute is cutting out the five minute noise, right? So once you start to see this develop, you quickly move, and to me it's second nature. I'm moving in between screens or just switching in between the time frames. Then I'm looking at um, then I'm looking at the one hour, and the one hour is showing that it's one fat, fat reversal candle. And of course, this lasted till three o'clock. This is between two. It started at two and it ended at three with this, uh, 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 with this, uh, um, I would say, red doji uh, cell. So the point is, within this one hour, within this candle, you switch between five minutes 15 minute, and by the time the one hour is done, you don't want to be an idiot lemming, to be honest with you, and start buying here. You want to be a buyer down here, and how would you determine that you want to be a buyer down there, is that you started off by looking quickly at the five minute. I'm walking you through the sequence. The five minute developed this. Let me get the highlighter. The five minute developed this. We don't know if that's a real reversal candle. It can turn red and come down any second. But then the second candle developed five minutes later. So if you want to be really disciplined, I mean, to me, it comes naturally. You will immediately switch to the 15 minute to see what the heck is going on. The 15 minute is telling you that this reversal candle that started off as a hammer on the five minute now is turning into a real beautiful, real fat uh, 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 hammer reversal. The next 15 minutes, it comes down a bit. You can see that it did come down a little bit, but then it turned. By the time the second reversal candle is done, you want to, if you did get in here, and followed these simple rules, you would be a seller around here. The, it actually went higher. It went up here and touched the VWAP. I'll explain that in a second, this dotted line. At that VWAP, we had a massive inverted hammer. Now, you don't need to know, like, oh, it tell your brain, oh, it's an inverted hammer. It comes naturally when you practice it. Practice, make it perfect, okay? Nothing becomes perfect in this business, but at least it makes you more comfortable with what you're doing. So the point is that from a trade strategy point standpoint, by the third candle, by the third candle, you need to be out. It went down here. And then you got this big fat one that went up and touched the VWAP again and the 50 SMA on the 15 minute right there, this one. So somebody says, man, I missed out this part. Well, if you sold close to here, does it matter that you missed a fraction of the profits up here? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Because you should have been a buyer, not necessarily at that bottom. I'm not saying we have to be like perfectly at the bottom on that. When that reversal hammer happened on the five minute, okay, like this. You don't need to be down here. As long as you're part of that candle, then you make the money. You're talking about 40, 50, 60, 70% on SPX or RUT calls. I'm not explaining rocket science here. You're not sitting on a NASA um, training seminar telling you how to juggle the controls on the shuttle. Guys, let's keep it simple got to train your eyes to understand these things that happen. You all have computers. Yes, a lot of you have day jobs. I fully understand that. And you should have a day job. I wish I had a day job. <laughs> I write my own checks. And it's tough writing your own checks, believe me. But God bless me. I am free. I am independent. Right? The Declaration of Independence. And thank, you know, thank God. And thanks for our great nation. I'm able to do a business like this on my own and do well and have the heartbreaks and still do well. So the point is that if you followed this, you didn't need to know anything about economics or anything like that. Now, let me explain to you a couple of other things here. 
you have to have the right strategic markers on your charts to tell you what the markets are doing. I don't make up things. I look at my things because they're structured a certain way and I have the deliberation and the conviction of going out there, okay, I think this is going there. I'm wrong a bunch of times on intraday fast trades. Hey, it's up to you to figure out what you, how you're going to manage your trades. I'm not, you know, because I'm, I don't have a fiduciary responsibility towards anybody's making money. I am providing some very powerful tools, and I am. So what are those powerful tools that I'm providing? Number one, you have to use the Darvis box. Your platforms, hopefully you use Thinkorswim, whether you use uh, uh, any other platform, TradeStation, whatever, sure it's there. Darvis box, got to use that. Why is it so important? It gives you exactly like what, what the wide ranges are. I explain to you how important the Darvis box are in the next sequence, in the next couple of minutes. You have to use that. Use the indicator, this dotted line called the VWAP, Value Weighted Average Price. I don't want to get into it too much, that the literal definition. Go up to Investopedia, Investopedia and read it on your own, please. The Value Weighted, here is the only thing you need to know. Simple stuff. It is generally where the prices will, it will act as a magnet to where the prices will gravitate to. The mean reversion part is if you move too far away from these dotted lines, okay, like you did here, like you did here, you will revert to the mean one way or the other, whether it's the 15 minutes, whether it's the one hour, I'm not talking about the daily here, but that's exactly what it's doing. So if you're an active trader during the day and you may want to make yourself a decent sum of money, whatever it is, $200, $500, $5,000, I don't care how much money you're trading with, right? You got to use these tools. Use the VWAP. You move too far away from the VWAP. You want to look to see how far you fall. If you fall close to the lower Darvis, you got to buy. As long as the Darvis is not doing another stair step down, that means there's more selling to come, you got to buy the lower Darvis. You got to look to see the volume because everything is interrelated. So your eye, you need to basically, you know, you need to basically look at it quickly and say, okay, the, the, the good old stochastics, deep oversold, this is a 15 minute I'm talking about, shorter term trades, all right, intraday stuff. 15 minute is now oversold. You say, okay, this is oversold. We had four large sell candles. You generally get three or four. You very seldom get five. Just remember that. You're starting to see this turn. You start to see the green bar, volume bar appear. That's short covering right there. This is that five minute on the five minute chart. This was the candle developing. You see an expansion of the bar. You can stay with the trade. Of course, this red bar scares the living daylights for idiots who got in up here. And I will call them idiots because they're too slow and they're lazy and they're not looking at it or they're too scared to buy down here, which is pretty much what happens with traders. Traders are always so fearful to buy the reversal hammers. Why? That's the point you need to buy. So they're feeling comfortable by now. They buy here and guess what? Plop goes the weasel. Or pop goes the weasel, right? So there you go. It comes down, they panic, they sell, and then they want to slap themselves silly because the next candle would have made them a good deal of money. Some of them sell here, buy here, get slapped again, want to cry and rip their hairs out because the next green candle takes them higher. Well, what can I say? You can take all that heartbreak away by being somewhere in this zone, looking at the deep oversold sto uh, stows to happen. Now, if somebody wants to stay in that trade for a good hour, then they have to follow the stows. Look at the stochastics. Despite these candle fluctuations all the way up here, the stows kept on going higher. Kept on going higher. As long as the stochastics, and I've said this a zillion times and I'll keep on repeating to eternity, okay, till I keep on trying to help people with, my, with the Clueless A trading service. As long as the stochastics keep on moving higher, you want to stay with the trade. Once it gets up towards the 80 level, which is getting into that overbought zone up here, 
me get all these lines out here. What if this is climbing up? You want to stay. Oops, sorry, you want to stay with the trade. Period. And I can't even impress on people that they should do that. And I hope I I don't know a bunch. I know a bunch of you do that. I just want everyone to do that. So the point is that we're talking about this section here. Friday, Friday, okay? Not the, the thing, the 15 minute. All right, there you go. Here's Friday. Good. So the stoves here are moving beautifully higher. You want to stick with the trade. Do we know exactly that stochastics are going to turn down from you? No, we don't. But as long as you catch this section of the move, which it be this section of the move. You just made yourself a decent sum of money. Shut your machine up, walk away. Seriously. When I issued that SPX hedge call, I mean put, the twenty the SPX twenty one thirty five puts expiring the same day as a hedge, because they were like around two bucks. That's not the reason why I recommended it. I recommended it because we were overbought right there. I didn't know about the Clinton fiasco and all the garbage with Huma Abedin and, and all that BS about, uh, uh, you know, the computer and stuff, which I think is just completely pathetically wrong on the part of the Clinton administration. Anyway, I don't want to get into that. The point is that I didn't know that, but I saw it overbought, issued the thing, and then this happened. So two went to 16. Now, I'm not some idiotic service that's going to tell you, yeah, I knew exactly it was going to be up 700% eight times, which translates into 700% of the money. No, I didn't. But I did know we were overbought and we would reset. We reset in, a, in less than 15 minutes or 20 minutes because of these candles. All right. Now we got oversold. We could have bought here and traded the market nicely for the next hour. Now the 15 minute at the close, I mean, not at the close, right now, because this is a real time chart, is getting oversold again. So it's very possible that we open up a little bit tomorrow morning, but the one hour tells me that we are probably not going to. Anyway, these are the things you need to use as a tool. Don't want to get into too much. Davos box, need to use the Bollinger Bands. This is the yellow lines. Use whatever moving averages you want to use. I use the 50, the 30, the 34 here, the orange line, the 50, the red line, and also very importantly, this yellow line here, which is the five-day moving average. Where is that? On this screen. There, right there. This one. So the five-day moving average right here. There you go. Highlight it. The five SMA. It's something very important for traders because on a longer time frame, when the five SMA th turns, that's when it supports the markets going higher. So let's see what the five SMA is on the one hour. It's right here. This highlighted yellow line, kind of flattish. When you see that turning, even on a one hour basis, you see this thing bouncing off the lower Darvis. You see the stochastics deep oversold on the one hour here at 2 p.m. Right there. It was deep oversold. You can see that visually down here. Right? Below the 20 line. It's like a, it's a function. It's the first derivative of the RSI, relative strength index. So below 20, right down here, right there. Hammer reversal. Low stochastics. VWAP turning up and and the 5 SMA, this yellow line turning up. Some people use the 9 SMA. Good, whatever. I use the 5 SMA because I'm a, I'm a clueless idiot. It means 5 trading days in a week, right? Bingo. I use the 5 SMA. It works for me. Some people ask me, why didn't you use the 9 SMA and stuff? Well, you can use whatever you want. It just works for me. So the bottom line is you see all this turning up. You go into that trade for whatever period. Lasts about an hour, half an hour, 15 minutes. You stick with it. You get overbought, you sell. 
Now, if you use the quad platform, which I encourage everyone to do, and many of you are starting to do it, it makes life a lot easier. Those signals are very accurate. The slow stochastics turning, the fast stochastics turning, the pivots and everything that I keep on showing. So if you really want to make some real money or lose less money, because that's really what trading is all about, losing less money and making more money, then definitively use the, at least try out and learn the right way to use the quad platform, the Algo HFT. I make nothing out of it. I've been using it for years, paying big money every month. But for members, like I said before, I told uh, the head of that uh, company, they're based in Jersey City, and they supply to a lot of hedge funds, Wall Street firms, that they charge, um, they, he's agreed to charge 120 bucks a month. And people who can afford it, and everyone should afford it, you make a lot more and lose a heck of a lot less than $120. You, I'm sure many of you are losing a lot more than that in these type of volatile markets. I hate rubbing it in, but I know it. Okay? So the point is, don't be penny wise and pound foolish. Try it because those signals are accurate, but you can use Thinkorswim or any of the platform that you're using. Just know how to read it. Now, saying all that, let's take a look at something that I noticed on the, Rus on the, um, on the Russell 2000. These are the Russell 2000 futures, index mini futures known as the TF. I'm an astute re reader of signals. I would say a good 90% of the times, my longer, my swing trading signals are correct to the teeth. So one of the things that I noticed on, uh, on Friday, this was Friday's close, was a green doji right there. You're looking at it, you're staring at it, I'm highlighting it right now. When you get a green doji like that, it is a pretty damn good sign that we are close to a very powerful tradable bottom. I repeat, we are close to a very powerful tradable bottom. Does that mean that my that my thing uh, um, is going to come correct within the next 10, 15 minutes? No, I'm saying within the next 24 hours, we will get a pretty powerful tradable bottom, in my opinion. This doji here. We are deeply, uh, we, uh, this is a daily uh, volume bar. It was very positive, even on a down day. That's very nice, 112,000 contracts traded. Nice and, you know, above average. We also see the internals, deep oversold, bouncing around in deep oversold territory below 20. I like that. We also see the McLaren oscillator at minus 135. Yes, it can slip lower down to which the last time the market had a severe bounce on the Russell 2000 from the 1210 level all the way up to the 1235 level. That's 25 points in two, three days. 25 points in three days. Calls at six were at 22 or somewhere around there. When was the last time you bought a stock at six and sold it at 22? When was, I repeat, when was the last time any of you bought a stock at six and sold it at 22 in three days? Yeah, on a fluke, maybe you did. But this is what happens if you play it properly. No one's saying to go out there, put your whole book into the Russell 2000 down here. But the last time we saw a doji, this was a red one. This is a green one. We have a slight doji here, cross, because of futures down minus 240 on the Russell 2000. You got a nice tradable bounce for the next 24 to 48 hours that generated 200 to 300% on your money. If you can't handle that because you're too scared and you do not want to look at charts and you just want to just go under your, your bunker, Okay, drink some bad beer and lie on the linoleum floor. Feel free to do so. But I'm giving you the real facts of life like it happens all the time. We are deep oversold. We will get an oversold bounce. After that, we want to crash another 500 points. Well, let that be. We'll try to cash that too. But I'm telling you what I see in front of me. So. These things are very important to read as you are trading. 
Um, okay, now the chart that I want to show is uh, a chart of oil. I projected oil up to the 52 level weeks and weeks ago. I'm not an oil trader. You all know that. But I projected it based on my chart because I was using it as a proxy. It went to 52.20. You can see that beautiful blue line. Since then, I drew a downtrend line and I said that oil would basically pull back towards the 48, 49 level. I'm sorry. I said it would pull back towards the um, 49 level. Lo and behold, it pulled back to the 49 level and actually went and now is creating, and this is called real microscopic reading. It is bouncing off the 34 day moving average on the daily right here and creating a mini hollow candle, which a term that you've heard from me and I'm sure from other, you know, services, whatever, if they use the word hollow candle. Want to know the definition of a hollow candle? Feel free to go to Investopedia because I'm not going to waste my time explaining long-winded definitions of things. This is a hollow candle in development. You're looking at it right now. Bouncing off the 34. Is it possible that we bounce off the 50? Absolutely. The 50 is at 47.53. The hollow candle developing right now in real time is 48.22. I did say we would go to 49. Well, we actually broke below 49. I recommended DWTI at around 55, 56 dollars. It is now at $63. So how about buy, you know, think about it as a hedge. You got $7 under your belt in one of the most volatile markets known to men. And I traded most of them out around 60, 61. You all know that. I'm not in DWTI anymore for now. Because I do believe that the idiots at OPEC and a couple of the other Arab countries and the other European countries who are part of OPEC are going to somehow hammer out a deal and oil will have a tactical bounce towards the upper end of the Bollinger that's around $52. That's my opinion. Some people might say oil will break down towards 44. I highly, highly, highly doubt it. For reasons which are technical. This is a daily chart. We are deep oversold. We are creating a double bottom. The McClellan oscillator on, on the oil futures is at minus 135. You do not be a you do not want to be a hardcore short on oil and buy the crap out of the DWTI, which is a short ETF on oil at this juncture. Yes, you might get one dollar one or two a little bit more. Uh, on the on as oil slips down towards the 50-day moving average, but I can assure you, you lose most of your money as oil turns around. Is it possible that we completely break down to 44? It's a low probability trade, very low probability, um, but I don't think that's happening right now. Will it happen later? Yes, it probably can. So saying all that, um, you have to you have to follow. You have to you have to track the charts, period. And I make life a lot easier because I constantly keep on putting some very tactical charts out there. All you all have to do, and I say this with real sincerity, because in a way, in between my so-called tough self, I do care that if you just did that and took a little bit of extra effort in doing that, I have enough free ACS video casts, including this one, including instructional video casts on my Clueless A trading channel for people to basically learn how to do it. I have enough lessons that people can take with me. I spent my whole weekend working with a whole bunch of really diligent, focused people who spent a bunch of hours with me working on understanding different things. And they're the ones who prosper. They do. Not because I'm a genius trying to tell them exactly how it's going to happen. Excuse me, how it's going to happen. It's because I am telling them what works, how they can effectively manage these extremely volatile markets, and lose less and make more. End of story. To so sign up for these ACS sessions, okay, and not just wait around for the free ones to come around all the time, because this is a capitalist world. I'm spending my hard-earned time away from my family, away from my personal responsibilities to, to 
teach all of you. So you got to pay the few pennies. Go to a lawyer. They charge you $200 an hour, $100 an hour. You go to a frigging tra traffic lawyer because you got a ticket in a different state. He'll charge you 200 bucks just to take care of the ticket. Maybe the ticket fine was only 40 bucks. End of story. I don't want to get into that. So saying all that, um, let me give you a picture on the earnings side, okay? And I'm going to try to make this simple. Playing ER is a complete gamble all the time. We have had multiple ER wins, earnings report wins. Buffalo Wild Wing, um, Service Now, NOW, you name it. We had it losers too. Amazon, right? The biggest one. Um, O-R-L-Y, O'Reilly Automotive that no one really cared about. In fact, it came down and then went up $11 on Friday. But we have multiple, multiple winners. Akamai. I, the things don't even come to my head. We have some huge ones. So what's the best way to play earnings? There's no one best way. But I know one thing. You don't want to put in too much money into an earnings play or you want to minimize your risk. So one of the ways that I do, like Amazon, I didn't expect the stock to fall 40 bucks. So one of the ways you do, which costs a little bit, mind you, you buy way, you buy way out of the uh, um, out of the OTM, out of the money calls, unless the stock completely explodes higher, you are never going to make money. And even if it completely explodes higher, you have a five-minute window the next morning to sell that crap at the right price. And these market makers, especially the automated ones, are such scumbags. They will never give you the price you deserve, and you will never make the money or even lose money, even though the stock is way higher. I learned that a long time ago. So one of the ways you want to play these big cap monsters, okay, is you want to buy deep in the money. You don't have to buy a bunch of them. Deep in the money in the case of Amazon. Oh, we had huge winners. I want to mention this. Microsoft was huge. American Express was huge. Those two, from a blue chip standpoint, were huge winners. And those calls were a heck of a lot cheaper. But it's not just about calls. One of the ways I think everyone should do is they should buy a little common. If you have an IV, implied volatility, post earnings of plus, minus 20, 30, 40, don't you think you can buy 10 shares? Because if it does go up plus 40, within five minutes after hours, and you have ability to sell it. You put a limit order out there after hours. You just cleaned yourself. And I'm looking at the you know lower denominators, $400 for doing nothing other than doing the right thing or the smart thing. So if something has an implied volatility of greater than 10, that means it's it's expected to move plus minus 10. And I put it out there on the earnings place, IV. So let's say IV for Amazon was actually $43. So if you think you can, you know, if you can gamble 10, you're going to gamble 800 bucks into it, right? Your 800 is never going to go to zero. So you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to buy 20 shares. All right. So the point is that the 20 shares on Amazon are 10 shares, depending on whatever size, if you have a day trading account or not, whatever, margin account, you obviously have to do it in margin, it will cost you roughly $800 and change. Stock goes up. I'm sorry, uh, if the stock goes up 40 points, you just made yourself $800. Stock goes down 40 points, you don't have to panic and lose 800. That brings me to my next point. 
Amazon was $823. Oh, coming back to the options, you want to buy deep in the money options, $10, $20 in the money. One option can cost you up to $3,000 or can cost you $1,500 or can cost you $2,000. So you look at yourself and say, oh my God, it's like 2000 bucks." Well, the fact remains that if you're going to play not the stock, but you want to play the option, you've got to treat it like a stock. So you're playing it for 2000 If Amazon did go up 40 bucks, your $2,000 would be $4,000 and you would feel like a champ. And it didn't go down, your $2,000 will be down to $500. So the question is that if you buy deep in the money and not immediately two days out, meaning like you know expiring the same week or so, maybe you bought the next week and it does cost you money, it is very possible that you'll recover your 2000 bucks because look at Amazon. The stock was 820 bucks. It plummeted down to 750, 745. It went as high as 790 right there at around 10 o'clock on Friday and closed at 776. Looking at this chart, does it really look like that the stock is spiraling down here? Regardless of what the dogmatic bears say and whatever, and I'm in no love with Amazon because if you all remember, I wasn't even trading Amazon for the past week or so while a bunch of traders in our group for no, for, you know, who did pretty okay here and there were trying to chase Amazon because I don't like playing bloated stocks. So different ways you can do it. You can buy a deep in the money call. You can sell a call. You can buy a put and do a straddle. And I did mention that, that we buy a put right at the price of where it is at. You can buy the same week's October 28th put. We should have delivered some decent sum of money. And the small put that I had did deliver the money nicely. Not enough. Why? Because the stock didn't, you can do options at 750. The next day, the stock opened up nicely at 781, which brings me to my point of how to play after our stuff. And it's not rocket science. Some of you do it. So let's say, for example, you see, you know what? I have those calls. I know they're going to open lower. Or whatever the case, you don't have a position before earnings and you want to play this. The stock, stocks like this don't collapse down 200 points and keep on going down. It just doesn't do that. That's something you just have to know. These are core holdings of major mutual funds and, and, and institutions. And Amazon didn't do anything wrong. They just said they would spend more. Some haters will say, oh, it's a bloated company. They're doing a cup. I don't want to get into that. Okay. I have analyzed more companies and more of you guys have seen balance sheets and income statements. Believe me when I tell you. So I just don't do it. So looking at this here, so that somebody put, put out a limit order and they get done, and I did this, they get done around 750, let's say around 760. They put a limit order out there on that bounce and this happens very fast. So you have to put a limit order out there. So let's say you put a market order. Uh, sorry, it, you have to put limit orders out there and uh, after hours, like if you say market. So you put a limit order out there, you get done. Above that, let's say. The stock within 15 minutes or less went to, it didn't go there. This is a false spike. Went to seven, close to 790. It did go there. You just made yourself almost 30 points. You buy a limit order, you got done at 760, you throw out a limit order out there 20 points higher. If you bought a 100 shares, if, you're, if your thing uh, allowed it, your uh, account allowed it, a lot of you have day trading accounts, of course it's going to allow it, you know, 100 shares, you just made yourself $2,000 in 15 minutes. So whatever option that you had out there, you just mitigated a whole bunch of your loss real fast. Putting out a limit order out there, do this on your own with one share, just to, you know, that's like paper trading, except it's real trading. Put it out with one share on the next earnings, on a big mover. Because these reversal bounces, of course, you have to be near the screen. You see a major reversal bounce of this magnitude, reversal hammer, it is going higher. Now, I'm not going to walk people through after hours trades. It is not. You guys don't pay me enough to do that stuff, and I ain't going to do it for anybody. 
you know, I do my own after hours trade, small ones back and forth. I don't, sh I never short after hours. That's like a crazy business. On the long side, the same crap happened with Expedia. The same thing happened with PayPal. Expedia went up 16 points. I'll show it to you in a second. So you, let's say you get done at 260, not at 245, 745 where the thump was. That's too fast. Unless you had a limit order at 745 because you knew it was going to 745, then you're lucky. So 760, within minutes, it goes to 790. Let's say you didn't get the 30 points. You get 20 points of that. You just made yourself $2,000. Or if you put 10 shares for kicks, you just made yourself $200 to take your wife or your partner or whoever you're with for a nice dinner. But it's more important other than a nice dinner and the money is the confidence level, the practice that you build. This is the only way you learn. This is the only way you learn. Not by listening to me, not by listening to other services, by doing it on your own. Now, once it did that, it pulled back. And if you're really watching the screen, you can actually see the candles. You could buy a little bit here around 770. You can see it rising. Pay a little patience, it goes back to 790 again. Again, you can make another 15, 10, 15, or 20 points. And then you say, enough, I'm done for the day. I'm, I'm actually taking my wife or whoever I'm with for dinner. So you can play after hours on reversal bounces. Let me show you Expedia. Now, you don't need to hold it. You can close out that position. The stock eventually closed at 8 o'clock at around 776. Next morning, it opened at 781. Now, Expedia, look at this. And this is not something that happens infrequently. It happens a lot. It happened with the boring fart company, excuse my French, like PayPal, which bounced down. I saw the reversal candle, bought a bunch. Stock was up $6 by 10 o'clock the next morning from where it was. Expedia thumped down. I started seeing this reversal candle. And by the way, I have traded Expedia before only during ER. And I've seen this happen before. Algos, forget retail traders. Retail traders, all of us included, are a bunch of morons. And the biggest morons are the ones who try to be analysts. Oh, these numbers, you know, they don't make sense. Bullshit. If you're doing all that, you'd be a star analyst on Wall Street or some other big financial institution around the world and not making stupid comments on stock tweets or anywhere else for that matter. I mean it. And that includes me. That's why I don't talk about it. I know a heck of a lot more about earnings and stuff to read, it, you know, read those earnings, understanding it, and the macro backdrop behind it, but I don't make any comments about it. So here, you get a reversal move down here. You start to see this candle develop. You're not an idiot. You know this thing's going higher. So let's say you put out a limit order. It hit 116, and you get down up here at 120. Or even you get down here at 122. In 25 minutes, 20 minutes, it went to 137. So once you get that limit order in, you say you put out a limit sell out there for $10 higher or manually track it. Look at this baby. Went down, pulled back, still higher. Next day, 10.30 in the morning, goes back to 133, closes at 131. What was the low pre-market? 116. Just want to say that you can do after hours trading with a small amount of shares. You can forget about the options because options are manipulated heavily. Unless you buy deep in the money and the stock is way up, you are not going to make money on that. So forget that day, that, that pipe dream that many of you have that if you buy way out of the money calls, you're going to make money. Nine out of ten times, you're going to lose money. Unless they're real lottos on a boring blue chip like Philip Morris, 
which I've never played, and I told you guys to buy those options at 60 cents, they went to a buck 14. That's almost 100%. So, that's pretty much it. Deep in the money calls, like price lines coming up. So, looking at price lines chart, we don't know what's going to happen. Chart looks fantastic. Look at the daily chart. That is a good looking chart. But it doesn't mean that it come, can't come down to the lower end of the Darvis at 14.29 and the stock closed at uh, 14.78, right? It's still going to be an uptrend if it comes down to, to the lower end of the Darvis. Here's your low. Let me draw this for you. So if you buy calls out of the money, you're finished. Here's your uptrend line, 1350. Worst case scenario, the stock will drop 150 points. Touch this uptrend line. Here's your second secondary uptrend line, which is holding. This line should be in blue. Bear with me. There you go. Okay. So I'm not going to go all the way back. This is when the stock was 958. We actually bought it at 1,000 and change. It was doing an ACS that day. When we, when we uh, actually identified that. Anyway, that's a long way off. So here we are. Is it not? Uh, the stock is beautiful. The 5034 moving higher. The Darvis is nice. Nothing in here tells me the stock's going to drop. There's no indication but it's earnings. They will manipulatively drop it and then, boom, take it higher. The notion that traders keep on having that it's a one-way move up or a one-way move down, I can't, I, I can't change people's minds. Everyone has this notion that the it markets either go straight up or straight down. They never do. These are not binary linear markets. They are algorithmic markets. That means if you had any understanding of calculus, or algorithms, or any type of advanced math, and even if you didn't and you flunked all of that in high school, you can still go to YouTube and learn it a little bit. Things move in a zigzag fashion, exponential fashion, algorithmic fashion, whatever the case may be. Still moving in the direction of on a 45 degree angle. So it's very possible the stock could very well drop to 1450 drop uh, um, 30 points or down here and not change any of the technicals if it completely breaks below the if it completely breaks below the 1430 level and keeps on collapsing that's a different story anything can happen the market's about risk then the next level of support comes in around 1325 so for put buyers it would be an um, unbelievable Unbelievable. Um, there's a first level of support around 1410. Um, win. So you can do a straddle. You can buy a small put. You can buy a deep in the money call. And maybe you can play, in the case of price line, it's going to move at least uh, 100 bucks or so, 50 to $100. You can deal with those 10 shares after hours. Or you can simply say, forget the options because I don't want the risk overnight. I can't sleep at night because of the options, because options are so steep. I think price lines options are around 15 bucks in the money, deep in the money. Not as expensive as Amazon was, to be honest with you. Um, so you say, okay, I'm going to play with five shares after hours. Problem is, if the stock gaps open $100, you have no chance. You're done. I mean, it's too late. So you can maybe buy a little bit of five shares or 10 shares, whatever the case may be. 10 shares of price line, is fourteen hundred fifty is uh, seventy dollars, right? Hundred shares is hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars. I'm sorry, fourteen thousand. No, ten sh ten shares is fourteen thousand seven hundred ten dollars. It's crazy, huh? Hundred shares is hundred and forty-seven. One second, just want to get these numbers right. Yeah, I was right. Because the numbers are so big. It's $147,000 for 100 shares. So obviously, like, oh, hold on. I don't have the buying power to do that stuff. So buy two shares, 10 shares. I don't know. 
if the stock's going to move $100, you figure out what you want to do. Because that is the IV on the stock, the implied volatility. So saying all that, with the case of earnings, that's, and again, I'm not going to go on and on about that stuff. There are many different ways to play it, but I'm showing you a simple way that you can do it. And there's no way of telling on earnings. No way. The most inconsequential companies that people don't follow, and I mentioned a bunch of them, like VeriSign, people might have noticed or not noticed, was up $7. Akamai was up big, $10 or $11. It was up 12% the next day. ServiceNow. So that's, like I said, you've got to sometimes look outside the usual names to do it. That's it. No more. I'm tired. Corey, you have any questions? Yes. Go ahead. Can, can, you look, can you look at Amgen? I thought Amgen come out great earnings. I thought that... Uh, um, Again, that even... let, me, let me stop you for a second. Good. What did I say a few minutes ago? Uh, I, know, I, know, you, I know, I know. I don't know. know what happened with Amgen. I had a few Amgen calls, actually. They just went blue and completely blown up. I don't know what exactly happened there. I don't know. I mean, they basically, the stock was down a little bit after hours. But they literally took a hammer to this to this uh, thing, and now it's like cheap as hell. So I don't yeah. really know what happened. Uh, but here, I'm looking at Amgen, so let me do my quick uh, 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 thing. These are like, to me, if I had no idea of Amgen and I looked at this chart, I'd be like, okay, I'm ready to buy it, give or take a few points. You know, the three-day rule. You wait like a, like three days for the margin selling to... Um, to, to, to uh, dissipate a little bit. So I would be a buyer on Amgen probably around the $140 level, you know, because that's humongous. You know what this tells me? And I'm giving you my opinion. This bar is so frigging huge, 18 million shares. This means some hedge fund either completely dumped it or some hedge fund, small hedge fund, had a lot of Amgen, Corey, and they just went belly up. This is not normal. This is way beyond normal. And um, uh, looking at the weekly, holy, you know, I mean, look at the, this, the weekly in one single day, the stock had a volume of 31 million shares, unheard of. The last time it had a volume like that was when the stock had fallen just a little bit right there. So I don't exactly know what's happening with Amgen, but this is telling me from a contrarian point, it's cheap, 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 cheap for a tactical trade. And I'm glad you brought it to my attention because I'm going to track Amgen tomorrow and see whether I can make some money off it. Because if you look at the weekly chart on Amgen, going back to October of uh, 2014, right? October of 2014, this is a beauty. Despite this drop, look what's happening internally. That's why I'm a technical trader. I don't care what happened to the price. I mean, uh, to, to what the news was and stuff. There's way too many things to like, you know, think about. I'm not a biotech specialist. I like the stocks. I mean, I like the technicals on a bunch of stocks. But this is telling me on a weekly basis that despite this humongous drop, we have a whole bunch of things going on. Capitulation volume, that means massive which might continue a little bit more you know, in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. But the internals are crossing over on the weekly, on the weekly. So that's a good thing. We are at the lower end of this weekly Darvis, which is 142. So we can slip a little bit more and come down to here, maybe 139, 140. That's normal. We are way off the 50 and the 34 moving average. That means the mean reversion play goes into play, which you understand well, which is at 157. But the quickest way for a trader to look at it, for stocks that fall that hard, and, and, and look what happened. Since 12 noon, this had to be a hedge fund blow up. You know what I'm saying? Since 12 noon, what, what, do, what do these green volume bars tell you? They were all buyers and short covers, right? Do you see this? Yes. This yes, is sir. how you got to look at things. This is all buying for since 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, they were like chop, 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 margin sells, like, you know, a retail guys panicking, whatever the case. From 12 o'clock onwards, big buying. In fact, the buying, if you add up this volume, the cumulative volume is higher than the cumulative selling that occurred in the first three hours. Damn good sign. 
damn good sign. So looking at this, the quickest way to do it from a technical perspective is you do a Fibonacci retracement or anybody can do that. So on a Fibonacci retracement, you do this. You look at the highs of the stock on the previous day. You draw it to the lows of the stock after hours or the next day. And you and and I you know I, I've done Fibonacci retracement and they work. I mean I've been doing it for years, um, especially on waterfall drops or water or 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 sort of euphoric rises on stocks. You can do that in a normal pattern. Uh, you are you, I could say that the stock will bounce up to 147. Best case scenario can bounce up to 150 to 153. So that's just that's that's basically the technical version of a tactical trader's version on Amgen. Aside from that, I have no idea why the stock got sold like that. But there's another one just like this, and I Go think ahead. you know, is is ISRG, and that one's sort of starting to warm up. Of so. course, of course. I actually, you know, I uh, lost uh, uh, on that, but I, I, still, I, I still have a little bit of common on that. ISRG basically has to be looked on on a daily basis, right? So ISRG... Um, these are very high growth companies, right? So with them, when they don't meet their guidance, um, these funds basically clobbered them. So in the case of ISRG, the way you look at it is, uh, one second, you look at a trend line on the stock when the breakout uh, uh, actually happened, uh, which was somewhere in this zone here. Uh, if I may add that, this was the breakout on ISRG uh, back on uh, on June of uh, of this year, and one second. And ISRG and stuff. Just remember one thing: the reason I don't trade these stocks on a daily basis is because they're very thinly traded. Uh, in the case of ISRG, in the old days, uh, I used to be a very active trader on that, especially on earnings. There are only three or four market makers on the stock. And what happens is they control the whole flow. So it makes it very difficult to be liquid on these things. And, and, and so I just leave it to earnings, play a little bit, and then I move on. But saying all this, this stock is so oversold here. The mean reversion here, the standard deviation, the fall, is probably around the minus four at this point. What does that tell me? Here's your, this blue line is the multi-year breakout on ISRG, which occurred around Brexit, around that time or around July 4th, okay? So it's all it did was go back and test it, and now it's a bounce. In my opinion, this is a very solid floor. Now, the, the mean reversion tells me it's a very good possibility that the stock can bounce up and test this down, slightly downward sloping 50 and 34 day moving average. I've seen it happen over and over and over again. So if that's the case, then the stock is good for about 26 points from here to there. If the stock breaks this multi-year breakout line, then we are in trouble. That's the next level of support comes in at the 625 level. I don't know. I think it's a low probability trade. And at the same time, in same like ISRG, similar to Amgen, you saw big buying on Friday and you're starting to see a nice tradable bounce coming up on the on the internals so those are the intern those are the technical readings on a stock that has fallen uh from 720 660 which is 60 points in the case of ISRG, isrg i don't want to make light of it 60 points means nothing it can get back 20 30 points of that real real fast what are the stock do you want me to quickly look at um, that's pretty much it. But one okay. last one on that Expedia, sure. when you were yes. showing that after hours, sure. you wait for the first candle to come down, and the second one, you see that start bouncing, that's when you know to go for it, right? I ba I basically what I do because I've had experience with Expedia before, so that was my my uh, uh, I, I had a, I had the benefit of past experience, right? So Expedia's numbers, I quickly look at it. Um, the numbers look pretty decent. But you can never know what the numbers look like because, you know, what the hidden numbers are. The minute I saw on the, I, I look at the one and five minutes, just so you know, I look at the one and five minutes very quickly because the one minute on a after hours is, is equal to a 15 minute as in speed of direction on an, in a normal market. Do you understand what I said? 
what would normally happen in 15 minutes in a normal market is compressed within the one and five minute movements after market. After market is fat quicker, fast quick, uh, far quicker. It's um, it's a, a, a because there are lesser players and the machines completely dominate uh, the 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 after market. So saying all that, let me go back to the five minutes actually after. So when I saw the first candle develop, I immediately threw in the order, um, and if I'm going to play with 100 shares, I will put in uh, 20, uh, 50, half of that in my first lot. If I'm going to play 200 shares, then I'm going to put 100 out there. In the case of PayPal, for example, which I wanted to show you, yes. So immediately after, when I saw this developing on the f one minute and the five minute, um, I threw out my trades out there. Uh, and then, of course, um, this was a uh, moonshot. And that's when I knew. Once you see a reversal candle this big, you know that the stock is not going to retest the lows. If the reversal candle was only up to here, then that's a different story. But if it's this big, and almost, it, it, this was actually up here, it shot up to 129. So that was a bullish engulfing bar. And that gave me the confidence to say, okay, you know, because that, the, the first lot that I, the 50 and then the 100 that I threw out, I was out of it in this, at, at this level. And then I watched it very carefully, saw this started developing again, and then I went in again. So it's not like I, I bought those 100 shares in this range and held it all the way up here. No. I sold my first lot, felt good, went in back there, and then added a little bit more. And like I said, you can play with small amounts. You don't need to play with 100 shares. Because remember, if a stock is moving $5, 10 $15 that fast, that quickly, you don't want to play with 100 shares because your money will be down $1,000, $1,500 within a matter of minutes, and it's not going to make you feel good. You know what I'm saying? So always do it with a, with a smaller amount, and then take the money. So let me show you PayPal. PayPal is not Expedia. PayPal is not Amazon. PayPal is not Tesla. Okay? PayPal is PayPal. And even in the case of PayPal, the reversal on PayPal was so huge on earnings. Right there. It was beautiful. Here. PayPal basically came out. And I don't even bother scouring the earnings other than quickly seeing it. One of my monitors, okay, they beat, they didn't beat what the revenues were. The PayPal went down to $38. I managed to get in somewhere around 39, somewhere around there, 39, 39 and a half. I saw this huge bullish candle develop in front of my eyes, okay, by, four, by five o'clock. And I said, I'm leaving the stock alone. Now, notice how different this pattern is than Expedia. Expedia was more choppy. Expedia was more choppy, and then it shot up. Here, it created a candle and continued its way higher. So by the time 8 o'clock rolled around, and that's my last deadline to get out of the stock or not get out, right? I, uh, which was, you know, uh, um, sorry, I'm trying to see where. Yeah, it went up here. What I did was I took half out. And I left my other half in there, and the next morning it went up another three dollars. Now that was my deter my determination to make based on what I saw happen after hours, where after the reversal there were absolutely no sellers. Get it? So that's so that's my answer. So a lot of these stocks do that, um, uh, which are not the high beta uh, crazy monsters, you know, like the like the uh, ones we talked about, like Expedia or uh, Amazon and stuff like that. But you have to also know the nature of the stock. That's something you have to know, you know. But I'm, I, I'm, anyone who's going to listen to this, I highly suggest do it with five shares, do it with ten shares. Just get into the groove, and practice makes perfect. And then after that, you get in there. You're like, fine, I'm not going to play earnings before. I don't want to risk my money on the options because they're so bloated and inflated. Whatever the case may be, I'll buy ten shares. I'll make a couple of hundred bucks after hours. You can do it. Now those will only matter on reversals. I generally don't like shorting after hours because it's a deadly move. You can, like a Tesla, it went up 215. I had have, I have common stock. I sold a bunch, um, but I, I don't short it, even though it, you know, it, came down, it actually came down the following day, not the same day. All right? So, yep. so that's it. So listen, let's have a good night's sleep. Um, we'll uh, catch up tomorrow. Corey, thank you for being here. Everyone thank you. Thank listen. you. But we covered a lot of stuff, and uh, let's stay engaged. And like I said, um, let's 
be very careful about things, uh, but then at the same time, let's not let our fear take over and miss opportunities that might be in front of us. And that applies to all of us, including me. All right? You know, so. you know one last thought. Sure. I think there's a good chance possibly yes. IBV might get a bounce because if it looks yes. like Trump might be gaining yes. Yes. Uh, you know, off of Clinton. I, I completely 110% agree with you on that. And I think that's why IBB in general, aside from Am, uh, Amgen and all that stuff, was overall holding out pretty damn good. And from a just from a purely business standpoint, I completely agree with your statement. And regardless of how this stock looks, you got to remember one thing, a couple of things going on here. At this point, some people are saying they're going to 240. I read a couple of articles this weekend. I beg to differ with that for two reasons on the IBB. Okay, here's your IBB chart on the daily. Okay, so this doesn't look right, and this looks like the next standpoint. I disagree. One, look at this volume. The last time we had volume, capitulation volume of this magnitude, what happened? The IBB bottomed within 48 hours. Look, see that? Look, look, look. All right, um, here was one difference this was selling and then it bounced a little bit and then again we are here so the bottom line is in my opinion from a tactical basis i'm not talking for absolute bottoms i think we're close to a oh, tradable move now look what's happening here internally this is when ibb hit uh, uh 260 now we are 257 look what's happening to this this is known as a positive divergence see that the internal, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. This is definitively on the daily a positive divergence. There's no question about it. No question about it. Here it looked like complete crap too. All right, back on uh, on May second, there was a positive divergence going on. Look what happened to IBB after that. Of course, that was a pretty phenomenal run. Can it happen again? Believe me, Corey. And this is the last thing I'll say, so everyone else can hear it too. I it never ceases to amaze me what markets can do at times when we all think it cannot do and we all know that and we but as humans we always keep on thinking like oh it's with the trend down it's going to stay a trend down oh man oh man i'll tell you i've got my butt handed to me trying to short it weak market okay and trust me that's just the way it works for two reasons number one when sentiment gets this negative, and sentiment is very negative in the market right now, especially on IBB and certain other sectors, all right? Uh, especially IBB on biotech. You know, you hear one single good peep out of it. I know selected stocks are doing fine, but I'm talking in general, the big, the big uh, generals on the, on, 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 on the IBB. Number two, the cash hoard levels are so huge on the side. Where do you think they're going to go? Bonds are flying sky high. So but money's flowing out of bonds into the money markets. They're not fully flowing into the stock market yet other than selective names. So where are they going to go? So that's what I'm getting at, that we are in a tricky market, no question about it. We got a lot of you know pitfalls and, and things to worry about. But when you look at these internal divergences and stuff, we should expect a reasonable bounce on that. However, one last thing I'll say to all traders, if you're sitting on positions which are not working, try to free up some cash from those to use it in places where you can make money. Because the longer you wait and it doesn't work, the more it damages your psyche on what you can do and how many opportunities you're missing. You understand what I'm saying, right? So, so that's, yes. uh, that's something to keep in mind. So on that note, got to go. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. Thank you. Awesome, awesome class. I, I appreciate it. Thank you for being here, Corey, and everyone else who couldn't be here. Do check it out. S&P futures are down about a buck fifty. Good sign. Let our let the 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 best man win. All right. Wink, wink, Corey. And uh, and uh, and let's let's move on. Right. So that that's sir. All. Thank you. Thank you. And all the best. God bless you. Take care. Bye bye.